What would someone want to know if they're doing this to their bike? Well, you can have run sports bikes with it. The thousands, they ain't nothing. I did rolling starts with them and I destroyed them. Are they having to lift because they're wheelieing, or do you have some guys that are pretty good riders that are able to stay in the throttle on a thousand? I'm always ahead of them. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. So a leader bike, a thousand cc Suzuki Honda. What are they? It was a CBR 1000 the first time. Honda CBR 1000. He doesn't even know if they're lifting because they're behind him. <laughs> Rowdy. First impression was crazy smooth, but second, third, fourth gear is absolutely insane. I'm lucky I don't have a lot of money. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, I can't believe how smooth it is though. I'm just like cruising all in yeah. on the freeway, put her in second, cruise, put her in third, and then just got on it and on into fifth, and I was like, this thing's so crazy. 181 horse. This is this thing's wild. This is one of our best customers, Mr. Hoke. And every time we post a video of a 135, he's like, man, I built a 143, you didn't post it. So he came in for his first service. We have the bike here, we have him here, so we can get some real feedback from a rider of what it's like to ride a 180 plus horsepower beast. And it's got a pair of these in it. Four and a half inch bore. This is one that hasn't gone through the final bore and hone yet but massive, massive cylinder, not only in the diameter of the cylinder, but how thick the sleeve is in that guy. And of course, we're running the spigots a little deeper. You can see where we're notching out to go around the piston jet. You can see where we have to index the cylinder so they don't hit each other. Over, over 110 thou thickness on all the way around the cylinder on that sleeve. Just a big, strong piece of ductile iron inside of that aluminum cylinder body. And since we have all of that volume, that 143 cubic inches, you have four valve pockets here. Look, the cylinder cut me. <laughs> so those guys are sharp, man. We got to be careful of those things. Barely touched it. So on the 143 cubic inch, you have so much volume. We don't need a real big dome. This dome right here is mostly offsetting the valve release pockets because if we add up all the pockets, it's real close to a four cc negative. So we got to put a dome on there to get it back. This is a plus 1.04 cc dome. We run in combination with our 95 cc monster head to give us a corrected compression ratio, real close to 11 to one corrected. You know, it's just a little bit under that and it makes a ton of power. Bike right behind me, 181 horsepower, real close to 165 foot pounds of torque and it's a monster. So real cool pistons, just like all the pistons we do, CNC'd, underhead milled, just to reduce weight on that guy. You got your Molly skirt coating and the ceramic crown coating on her. Really nice piston. Of course, we've talked about it a bunch, but we run the lateral gas ports in the piston as well. Total seal rings on our setups. On the breakdown of these big motors, anything we do with a pair of our heads we're doing a built flywheel. Pretty much the end of the line for a stock flywheel in our program is stock heads. 128 with stock heads and 124 with stock heads. When we go to our 131 with heads, 135 or larger, we're building the flywheel every single time because a lot of times we don't say that in the builds online or on Instagram. So we use two companies that build flywheels. We use Gardner Racing Concepts and we use Dark Horse. And Every flywheel is getting either a Carrillo shelf rod or a pair of our custom MHP lightning rods by Carrillo. Um, both really nice rods, two different applications. We run both in our program. Um, this rod just got a couple more features, a little bit more money spent on this guy, and we've been steadily switching over to this on predominantly all of our motors. And it's a really nice rod. We'll talk about more in length later, but we have some features on the rod that make it different than your standard Carrillo rod, and they'll handle 190 plus horsepower. So the bottom end of this guy has a completely built man-of-war flywheel with a pair of 
Carrillo rods. The cylinders are the cylinders we just showed you a minute ago. They are a stock Harley Davidson jug with a brand new 4.5 inch sleeve inserted in them. It's got our monster heads on it, plus 2.5 millimeter oversized valves with the real unique square port that Frankenstein of us have done in our partnership. The monster manifold also has a proprietary square port that matches up to that head and we paired that with a 70 millimeter throttle body. This 143 cubic inch M8 Monster is paired with a Star Racing 615 full race cam. And you can really tell on the dyno sheet when she's getting up there in the RPMs, it's letting loose. And we are running this on pump gas. So 180 plus horsepower on pump gas. It's got a horsepower incorporated V2 air cleaner set up that is made for a 70 millimeter throttle body right from Horsepower Incorporated, clean intake, it looks good. Sometimes you'll see us do a wider one. The wider one does flow more air. It does help these guys get a little more horsepower on the top end. It just gets in the way of your leg. This guy with this air cleaner, it, it's, it might sacrifice a couple horsepower, but it gives you more room when you're on the motorcycle. The D&D, &D, it, it flows enough to make the 180 horsepower. It has the sound. We predominantly stick to about four or five different exhaust pipes that we like that works really well. Like a lot of our big horsepower builds, this bike got a pair of BSTs front and rear. The front end has the Quintec BST with the new Gaufler super light rotor designed to go with either a factory Harley Davidson wheel setup in their bobbins, or if you're gonna do a BST with a spoke mount brake setup, you can run these Gaufler rotors. On the rear, it's got the same Gaufler rotor. It's got a Twintec BST underneath the rear end under those bags. We've never seen a destroyed BST yet, and we have hundreds of sets out there on the road. Awesome wheel. If you're gonna break a stock rim, you're gonna break a BST. I mean, they're just as strong and they can handle a lot. So just cause it's covering fiber, doesn't mean you gotta be sensitive with the tire. I've hit a lot of potholes with mine, some hard stuff. I have never had a problem with the rims on my bike either. Let's go over the drivetrain, what's done in the primary and the transmission. So the primaries, our number one go-to, is the new MHP Comp of Power. It takes the stock compensator Harley has, we replace the comp ramp with a pretty much indestructible piece of steel that's tempered, it's polished, it's made out of billet steel, it'll handle anything you could throw at. We've never seen a broken one yet. And it's the smoothest power delivery from any other compensator on the market because it works how Harley designed it. All the pieces behind it and they're incorporated with it is the stock Harley components that can be replaced at any Davids, Harley Davidson dealership out there. So the spring pack behind it is a stock spring pack. Um, the bolt that's holding the compensator on is a stock bolt and it works the way it was designed from Harley Davidson and they did a very good job making it so it's not making noise at idle and the power delivery when you're getting off of the clutch and you're releasing and you're rolling on the throttle nice and smooth. The Recluse Torque Drive Clutch is our clutch of choice. We like to pair components with other components made by the same manufacturer, so the Torque Drive Clutch is paired with a Recluse basket. We've gone back to a Harley-Davidson stock primary chain tensioner. It was designed to work with their compensator, and the whole package is now our go-to on every bike. Paired behind the primary, on this guy with all this horsepower, a ton of questions. You gotta build the transmission. Well, it's all about the rider. I've never blown a transmission in any of my bikes. Ton of track time, ton of burning tires off on the street, and it's all about how you're doing delivery of the power. You have to get off the gas to shift. So when you're shifting a bike and you're hot riding it, you should go full, full power, lift, shift back into it. If you're not lifting on the throttle, you're going to break parts in your primary you're gonna break your transmission. So if you're operating it properly, that's the stuff you don't have to worry about. But we all get excited. We all have moments on our bike where we're letting it eat, that we do stuff that might not be perfect. And, and when that happens, you know it happened. You're like, ooh, <laughs> I'm glad nothing broke. So just wanted to go over the operation. Um, a, just a little bit of release on your clutch, but get out of the throttle. The key is to let up on this throttle. We talked to a lot of guys that are shifting of clutch and they just keep this guy pinned, and that is going to cause a failure down the road. So, stock transmission in this guy, 
in the rears, Legend suspension. In the front of the Road King, the nacelle on a Road King just looks real pretty. Harley did a great job. He's got a pair of GP cartridge kit up front. It's got a shorty carbon fiber fender on this bike, and there's two companies we go with. We deal DTF and we deal Hoffman. Real clean bike, real simple. In all reality, unless you heard it coming up on you, you'd have no idea that it makes 160 foot-pounds of torque at 3,400 RPMs. It bumps up to 164 at 5,000 RPMs, and it doesn't go below 160 until you're like at 5,700 RPMs. So 160 foot-pounds of torque from 34 all the way to about 57. And even when we're getting off the gas on the dyno sheet, it basically crosses back under 140 when we lift, and that's at 6,700 RPMs on this dyno sheet. She crosses the 140 horsepower mark at 4,500, and then she hits 180 pretty much as soon as she crosses the 6,000 RPM threshold and just holds it. It's just a beast. We got Mr. Hoke here. We'll grab him. We'll get some real testimony from him. He says street bikes can't handle this bike. And He's no spring chicken. So let's go grab him and we'll get some real testimony from the rider when you got some power like this. Okay. Let's go look at your bad boy okay, so you go. can tell everyone what to expect when they have something that mean. All right, okay, come let's on. Go. We talk a lot about the power, what we think they do. But I think what the viewers want to know is like, what your experience been, because you went from, was it a stock 114 when we got it? 131. It was a Harley 131? Yeah. Was it their whole setup with their exhaust on it? No, I had a D&D. A D&D and it was retuned? No, with the Screaming Eagle tune. Screaming Eagle tune. Which so you went, th you went through that process and had that. Explain the difference going from a 131 with Harley's tuner in it to the 143 when you got it back with us, of a, how different they were. It's about three times as much going from a 114 to the 131. It's way different. The 131, I didn't really respect the bike. This one here, you gotta respect it. It'll make you tap out. It'll make you let go of the throttle. So what are you noticing when you're grabbing a handful of throttle? I have a hard time hearing I'm hard of hearing, so sometimes I hit the red limiter because in Texas, I ride without a helmet. I can hear better, but the helmet, I got to really pay attention to my shifts, so it's, it's out of control. It's ridiculous. It, I mean, it, it'll, it'll go. There's no reason to even really hit seven unless you're really racing someone and you got some money on the line or your reputation on the line. There's no reason to hit seven or 7,200 RPMs. I mean, when you're hitting six, You've been in it long enough where you're, you're ready for the next shift point to come. But I mean, shifting this bike all day long at 65, no issues there. Yeah. And they just make a ton of power. I mean, anything from 35 up, it's just a monster. Oh, yeah. And I noticed the tire's ripping loose and you really don't even hear it. Yeah. Have you noticed that on this? Yeah. Yeah, you, it will bust them loose. I got the Metro tire on my bike, so it's a pretty good tire. Yeah, on this bike, we, we outfitted it with the BSTs and the Cruise Tech. So that's Metzler's new tire. Um, it's not going to get the longest Jevely out of mileage, but as far as an all-around awesome performing tire in the rain, on the street, and in the corners, it does it well. Yeah, very good tire. Yeah. You're happy with them so far? Oh, yeah. I had them before, so I did them again. Yeah. Awesome tire. We put them in our program. We pretty much run the Dunlop tires that come on the bikes. We switch to the Bridgestone. If someone wants something more aggressive than the Bridgestone, we go to the Metzler Cruise Tex. So the Bridgestone are the Battle Cruise. We love that tire. That's your best all around everything tire. This one's gonna have a little faster wear, but more performance out of it as well. Yeah. Correct. Now, when we did the 143, we also did the BSTs at the same time. Yeah. What's your thoughts? What have you noticed? It's hard because we did the motor and the BSTs at the same time. It's a whole different bike. It just it feels real light. It's just it's, it's a whole different feeling of bike. It just it's hard to describe it. It's one of the best upgrades I did was the wheels yeah. and the headlight. 
the headlight was a great upgrade too. <laughs> <laughs> well, get... Especially if you're going fast at night, yeah. you know, you need to see. Uh, the bars look great too. This is something you put on after us. Yes. What are these? Trask. These are the Trask hand. They looks awesome on the Road King. Yeah. I'd have to say that's, it's just a good looking handlebar setup on there. The bars went down a half an inch down. From a stock Road King bar. Yeah. So it's more set up as an aggressive drag bike. Yeah. Okay. Real stable feeling. I noticed yeah. that on the bar. So you get the polyurethane riser bushings in there. Just a real slick bike. I don't know why you picked such a girly color, though. I would have picked something a little more manly. Yeah. <laughs> but in the blue. Uh, hey, my eyes hardly makes one color. Black. Black. You know, I'm old school. And I love a black Harley. They are a little harder to keep clean, but when they're done right, they look awesome. And I'm a fan of putting some chrome on them, too. Um, I usually have an all-black motor like you, and I go with a polished exhaust pipe. Yeah. But I'm going to duplicate this bike for our track bike. I have a Road King. It started life as a police bike. I'm going to black it all out and catch up to you on the cubic inch. I might pass you by a couple. OK. But we'll see how it is. What would someone want to know if they're doing this to their bike? Well, you can outrun sports bikes with it. The thousands, they ain't nothing. I did rolling starts with them, and I destroyed them. So now when I go to box and breakfast for cars and coffee, they won't even come out to the street with me, because I tell them to come to the street, and they're like, hell no, you got the fastest bike here. Are they having a lift because they're wheeling, or do you have some guys that are pretty good riders that are able to stay in the throttle on a thousand? I'm always ahead of them. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. So a leader bike, a thousand cc Suzuki Honda. What are they? It was a CBR 1000 the first time. Honda CBR 1000. He doesn't even know if they're lifting because they're behind him. It's pretty impressive because they don't realize what a Harley set up with this much horsepower really is. A lot, of, a lot of Riders or sport bike guys have no idea what these machines are fully capable of dressed out like this guy. They think they're slow, big, heavy pieces of junk, and they're not. But you gotta spend a little bit of money on them, or a it, lot of money to they make cost, them. Back. You could have easily had three CBR 1000s, the yeah. cost of this, but like I explained, it's like when a diesel truck rolls up on a Camaro or a Mustang or a Corvette and they're able to dust it. It's not supposed to happen, and when it does, it's like, that truck on 35-inch tires, weighing five times as much as my car, just slapped me around on the road. It's cool when something unexpected happens, and it doesn't matter if it's in a truck, car, bike. It is cool to be the underdog and completely win. Yeah. Or dominate. I've had a GTR try racing me, had a Ferrari and a Lamborghini at the same time try race me, and I clowned them. They wouldn't even pull it back up to the red light with me. They stay with back. I said, come here. They wouldn't come. But a car shouldn't be out running a bike anyway. I don't think so. And you're in Texas, right? I'm in Virginia right now, but I'm from Texas. So from Texas, hey, if you see this face, this is Mr. Hoke. This is his bike. And you better have something really cool if you're going to try them. And uh, it, they're impressive. I mean, they will scare you when you have this much horsepower. The 143 isn't for the lighthearted. So keep that in mind. If you want to ride a bike in the rain and you want to tour, the 135 is that motor. This is for someone that wants to push the limits, show off, surprise someone when they come rolling up on you of what one of these machines can do. I appreciate you trusting us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hope. Thank you. I awesome bike. Thank you.